We are reaching the end of the year, and for the early days, OMS Sense is getting us their latest version, 2022.12. This new release includes a lot of great additions, but mostly set the table for 2023. Stay with me to see the top 5 of those changes. Hey everyone, this is Alex Reed, and today we'll see the new features in 2022.12. Let's start with the tile card. This card was introduced in the last version and is getting more control this time. So instead of just having a blank button that you can click and toggle the entity or something, some domains are getting more controls. And some of them are the vacuum, the lights, and also the covers. So let's have a look about those new ones. So you'll go in your dashboard. Right here, you want to add a new card, which will be the tile card. Let's look for this one. What I will add here is my garage door. I'll just rename it here so you can override the name just like you, you can uh, in the other version. And then you have what they call here feature. This will be dip, 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 this depends on the domain of the entity. So this one is a cover, so it has the cover feature. So you can decide to open and close it here and save. And we have pretty much the same thing for lights and vacuums. Another great thing that was added to this is that you can now change the color of those uh, cards. So let's say that I want one which will be red for a specific light or something. You can just put it there, turn it on, and voila. Number two, the local calendar. I think this one is my favorite. It was requested from the community since a long time, and now we have it in Home Assistant. So to get started, go to your Home Assistant instance you will go in integrations we want to add a new one this one will be a local calendar give it the name that you want let's say on my side i will create one for my climate to main, to manage the climate of my home and that's it now as up to your calendar right here and you now have your climate calendar here in order to add an event, you just have to press the button here, create what you want. So let's say that I have my week morning and I want to repeat that weekly. So I will select Monday, Tuesday and whatever the day that I want and save it. So now this is part of my calendar and I can base automation on that. Some issue that I have with my current setup is that some uh, event occur at specific times. So let's say that I set the temperature of my living room at a specific time, so six o'clock. But sometime when I'm out, uh, the home is in away mode. That means that some automation doesn't run and that the temperature is set as something specific. But now when I come back, it might be after 6 p.m., which means that I lost the trigger of my automation. But with the calendar, I can write specific script that will run on specific triggers. Like when I come back to home, I will execute a script that just check the current event in the calendar and set thermostat according that event. That will make things way easier. Change number three is the, the new entity text. This is really close to what text helper was. Text helper is meant to be used by you. So you create the helper and you use it whatever, however you want. Maybe you won't have any more to create the text helper by yourself and pass it to using automation or something to send it to the integration. Instead, the integration would just say, I have a text input here, and here it is. Right now, the first integration that provides those are MQTT and KeyNX, but I expect some others to be following soon, like ESPOM, I guess. Number four is the ability to sum entities without having to go in the YAML file. That means that you can combine some temperature sensors together within the UI itself. Let's have a look. So let's go in your settings, in your helpers here, and what we want to create is a combined state of serial sensors here. Let's say that I want an average of some temperature of the sensors here. And you have different statistics that you can check here. So you can get the minimum, maximum, the median, the range, the sum. So let's take that one. And here we go. Getting some statistics just become way easier. But I hope in the next version that we'll be able to set some attributes. So that way I could use like my thermostat to get the attributes from the temperature without having to try to explode that into different sensors. Number five is Matter. Matter is coming to Home Assistant and this version includes a groundwork to get it working. 
there is still some work to do. The mobile app doesn't allow to add new device on Home Assistant yet, but this will be coming soon. I'm really happy about the work that Home Assistant did with Matter. That being said, I'm still a bit skeptical about that protocol. I hope that it will solve the compatibility issue, but I need to see it first. We had so much promise with other protocols that I, I, I still have some fears. Here are some other no noteworthy changes. Bluetooth proxy is coming to Shelly device. You probably use that with ESP Home and ESP32, but now it's also available on uh, Shelly devices. Improve state coloring. Now, if you check in your history, you will see new colors that replace the old one. That should make it easier to see. There is also some new integration. So RQ, RNet, LiveZ Smart Home, Ruby Tag, Sensorion, and of course, the text that we talked a bit earlier. So they are all coming to this version. This was my first release review. I hope you like it. If you did, please click the thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. That will be really appreciated. And see you for the next projects.